Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Yeah. That's the best day for us. Yeah. Okay, we're back, we're live, we're here on Community Matters with a very special discussion about a special and unique program that you need to know about. And if you don't know about it, you better take notes <laughs> because you gotta go back, put on a calendar, and go there next year. I wanna overwhelm these guys <laughs> so that they have more people coming around than they could possibly imagine. Mike Smolder, he's the curator of public programs at the Mission Hawaiian, 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 Hawaiian Mission, Mission Houses, Houses yep. okay, which is the Hawaiian Mission House Museum. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and Will Ho'o, uh, he is the director of this program, this special program called Cemetery Poo Poo Theater. And this year, the subtitle is At, at Your Service. I, I keep wanting to say At Votre Service, but let's say <laughs> At Your Service, right? right yeah, and right. it has all kinds, it's laden with all kinds of secondary meaning. And uh, just, just in short, you know, this takes place in a cemetery. And you have never had as much fun in a cemetery <laughs> as you will. These guys really they enjoy making people enjoy themselves in a cemetery. And that's yeah. consistent with the way it was in the 19th century. Correct. It's all about the 19th century. Right, yeah, in the 19th century, the idea that cemeteries are uh, a creepy or scary place is a very 20th century thing. Um, so in the 19th century, parts were, uh, cemeteries were meant to be park-like atmospheres uh, where families could gather with their dearly departed and swap family stories. They would hold picnics at the different grave sites. Mm -hmm. um, and this is kind of a, a, a theatrical extension of that, if you will. <laughs> it is the greatest. And, and I envy you so much, Will, to be able to direct these. In this case, well, every year it is. It's five characters out of the five 19th century who are year. buried yeah. right there right. and who emerge from their graves to talk <laughs> to you. <laughs> well, Mike does the research, and he uh, gives it to a, a writer, the writer, and then he fact, fact checks it and whatnot. And then when we get the, the final draft, and then we start hiring, auditioning actors, and then professional actors, and you saw them, they were good, right? Oh, they were great, they were great. And I do have my favorites, I, I'm gonna tell you. Yeah. Well, you know, you, you speak to everybody, and they all had a different favorite. They all had a different favorite, and, yeah. and um, you know, and you like you like some for some reason, and you, and this is, and I, I, I was gonna say this later, but I'll say it now, because it impresses me so much. You go to one side of the cemetery, and you hear one decedent character, and he talks about, and this happened uh, just two weeks ago when mm -hmm. we were there. I think it was the closing, the closing night. Yeah, yeah, there, closing. Yeah. And he talked about uh, a character that he had dealt with in his life in the 19th century. And then you go to the other side of the cemetery, and you get another character, and that character is talking about how he dealt with the first character. Mm -hmm. So that there's relationships. Yeah. There was yeah. a small community, and you begin to, and I'm sure you're into this, you begin to get the feeling that it was a small community where people knew each other, right. and it was a special kind of luscious, delicious Hawaii. <laughs> right. Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's something that's uh, really important, is that some of these people did know each other during their lifetimes, and they interacted with each other, and we really try to bring that out in the scripts. That way the, the scripts are self-referential. Yeah. You know, they, they, re they reference each other's uh, uh, people and, they, and the activities that they were both involved in. So I'll ask you some questions. You know, there's always a sort of an aftermath discussion mm -hmm. in right. these programs, and we all sit in the, uh, with the mortuary. Or the, chapel. the chapel. The chapel. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's so interesting. I never had so much fun in the chapel. <laughs> <laughs> and we ask these guys questions about how they put it together, right. and, the, and, the, and the, the characters come in costume, of course, mm -hmm. and they answer questions. This is really another great part of the program that you do right. that. So I guess what I would ask you is the same kind of question I would ask you, I did ask mm -hmm. you a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Why these characters? Why not some other right. characters? So At Your Service was really about uh, people who were engaged in public and civil service um, or royal service. Uh, so Alexander Cartwright, who's of course famous for baseball, uh, relaying the rules of modern baseball, um, unbeknownst to most people, he was Honolulu's first official fire My chief. chief yeah. uh, uh, William Cooper Park was the marshal of the Hawaiian Kingdom for almost 35 years. Uh, Mabel Smythe was the first Native Hawaiian public health nurse, a very undertold story. Your favorite. Yeah. 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 My favorite. Yeah. 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 Uh, Lucy Peabody, who was a lady in waiting to uh, uh, yeah. Queen Ama and also refounded the, the Aha, uh, Ahahui Ka'ahumanu, the Ka'ahumanu Society. Um, and then the last one was Curtis Yaokea, who served in a number of roles in the royal government and territorial government. And, and all these like names that. have a kind of familiarity because mm -hmm. they're, they're all, you know, they're through the community. You see them right. here and there. Right. Mabel right. Smythe in Queens Hospital. Right. Curtis how you, you, you know, he sounds like somebody you know. Mm -hmm. um, well, you know his great-great. 
the grandson, right? The, yeah. the wrestler. Yeah, the yeah right, wrestler. Right, 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 right. I remember now, yeah. So, so, um, civic auditorium, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, the... Same wrestling, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, the, these particular five, um, there's a lot of considerations going into pick who we're going to portray. Um, number one is relation to the theme. Uh, number two, is there enough research to build a 20-minute monologue from? Uh, another thing is actually the spacing within, their, within the cemetery. Because uh, you don't want too much sound bleed. You want to make sure that they're far enough away from each other for that kind of thing. Also, you want to make sure that it's easy to move around the cemetery yeah. and make sure that the, the, the people coming can you know go easily from site, from grave site to grave site. Yeah, so there were chairs, mm -hmm. maybe 20 of them or so. 20 of them underneath a 10 by 10 pop-up tent. And, there, and it, as the sun sets, you know, the lights go on. Mm -hmm. right? uh, you right. turn the lights on. I saw you do that. Uh, yeah, me and <laughs> myself and uh, Baron, our operations yeah. manager at okay. the Mission House. And then yeah. the, uh, the character who's sitting with his, his or her back to you, mm -hmm. near his or her gravestone right. will stand up at the appropriate time, turn around, face the group, and do this, this bit. Mm -hmm. And the bit is transfixing because it's in costume. Uh, let's talk about direction. Yeah. How do you achieve this level of, what do you call it, acting kind of connection? Well, the, the, the key is to find the right people. You know, so, mm -hmm. so it's really easy to direct them. And all you have to do is just give them a few pointers here and there, and they just take off. They just take off with it. You know, so and it's, and we I get to rehearse with them individually, so so it's it's sort of easy that way. You know, it's not like everybody has to come all at once. We have a, we have an initial table read. Everybody gets to hear everybody. And then we have the dress rehearsal where everybody gets to see everybody else perform. But prior to that, I meet with them individually over at the mission house. You know, and we just just rehearse. I mean, they're just a great group of people, except know. for one. Um, and he talked about it now. Which, who was it? Uh, was hmm. was it? Um, my, the first one we saw down at the far end to the left, uh, Marshall Park. Marshall Park, yeah. The mm -hmm. the sheriff. Yeah, the, the, sheriff. the marshal. Yeah, yeah, the marshal of the Hawaiian yeah. King. He said he recorded it, and then he listened to the recording of his own voice because he was on a trip or something, and yeah. he couldn't be in the group. I he was great, him, by the way. I rehearsed with him before he left. And he arrived the day of the first show. Yeah, a couple yeah. of hours before the first show. Yeah, I just told him, "Don't you miss your flight?" <laughs> <laughs> well, they up. were all great. You know, how do you, how do you um, how do you find them? I mean, you, well, I I know the acting community. Yeah, yeah, and um, so I I know who can fit what character. You know, and whatnot. But we have we have auditions. People can come and audition. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and, and there's not the same every year. They're different people. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. and there there's there's a wealth of performers in in in, in Hawaii, the local community of a acting scene. But not everybody's right for a certain role. So you just right. it, it would just so happen that every year we just I don't know we just luck out. I mean, we do. I remember last year there was a woman. Oh gee. And she was a Hawaiian, native Hawaiian woman, really was, but the character really was too. Mm -hmm. Emma Navahi. Yeah. yeah. And she was so strident, so passionate. Oh my God, you know, I, you, to be in the presence of this actor, yeah. who, you know, she totally found her groove. Yeah. And they all do, really, in their yeah. own way. Yeah, yeah, that was Emma Navahi portrayed by Kahana Ho. Yes. Yeah. And, um, uh, you know, Emma Navahi was a, uh, was a very strong patriot. Um, Hawaiian patriot, yes. um, and uh, uh, was very involved with a lot of the Hawaiian patriotic movements um, after the overthrow and things like that. And that was something that we wanted to bring out. Yeah, last year was. She called, also ran a newspaper. Yeah, last That's year was right. called uh, Yesterday's News. Right? Yes, yes. It was all about, it was all about newspapers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Hawaii had so many newspapers, Hawaiian newspapers, and we were like the most literate nation in the world. It was right? a, and it was a whole study of language and writing and publication. Yeah. And Absolutely. it was another time. We don't have that now. Really. Yeah, what happened? <laughs> right. What happened? But yeah, it was part of the culture of the 19th yeah. century. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Newspapers played such an important role, and that's one of the reasons we chose, you know, the, the theme of newspapers and calling it yesterday's yeah. news. I mean, Kawi Ki Auuli, um, coming in the third, mm -hmm. his. His goal was literacy, you know, yep. and he succeeded. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you and you saw that period. I mean, in all the years I've been there, you saw that period from what 1820 to 1840 or 50, mm -hmm. where the, where the nation is is built. It becomes a, yeah. a global phenomenon. And right. I mean, and, it, and it's it. built on education and literacy. Yes, it is. Yeah, and, and you know, the thing about it is that people don't really know about this. Mm. Uh, furthermore, and, and, and tell, tell me if I'm wrong now, Mike. Okay. All right. Okay, but you know, you're still a student. 
In other words, Always. every year you're delving into different things. Every year you're finding stuff Absolutely. out. Absolutely. You didn't know the year before. You're, I get stunned. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. 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 I mean, a lot of the, some of this stuff. Um, it's a, it is a chance for me to keep learning. And um, you know, this outside of our uh, the story we tell at Hawaiian Mission Houses. I mean, people um, that come to the show, yeah. the, the local people say, "I never knew this." Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know? That's why it's such a treat. Yeah. You know, it's like you go into the cemetery. Right. And things are quiet. Okay, look back on the, on the skyline of all that development and big city stuff, right. not a mile away, but you're in this, this kind of island of yeah. uh, introspection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, you can, all of a sudden, you understand what it was before the cityscape. <laughs> right, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it, it becomes real personal. You know, yeah. this whole this whole the evening becomes very personal. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So how do, how do you direct them? I mean, I'm really interested because well, we get, you know, we're all actors. actors in our own way. You know what I mean? We'll, right, 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 right. <laughs> so no act. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so when you get the script, you look at it, and then um, you see, and then and then you do some research, outside research, and all the actors who. We get hired. Your own, your own research. They do their own you research. You need that too. depth yeah. you know, to direct them. Right. Yeah. And then, uh, and then you just go ac according to what they bring to the table, and you can flesh out more stuff. Are, are you telling me that they're party? They're party to the development of the script. I mean, are they, if if they want to change something, can they change? They it? cannot change the script. No. No. All right. Because that's <laughs> no, based that, on that, because, Yeah. Because I work with I work with our script writer uh, Zachary Woods. Mentioned. Um, quite frequent. Uh, you know, we go back and forth. We usually go through about four drafts, three or four drafts per script. Um, you know, and there's five scripts. So and you can it's imagine. polished. It's polished. Uh, Zach's become very good. He's even acted in these before. He's come. He's that come right. from. The, uh, he lives in Milwaukee. And he's uh, he's come out and acted well, acted. Uh, it struck in the shows. me. It strikes me that these scripts are really well done. Mm -hmm. They're poetry, and every word has moment, yeah. and every word is emotionally laden. Yeah. And I guess your job would be to get them to express that that emotion right. and just give them the confidence too. I mean, there were there is this is how difficult it is. Not everybody can do this because I had two people in mind for two different characters. And I said, you don't even have to audition. This is you. This is the character <laughs> is you. That's great. When I gave them the script, 11 pages, they said, I cannot do this. It's too difficult. I cannot do too this. Too difficult? Yeah. yeah. Now so everyone can do long form monologues. It's a very difficult thing. Why? Well, well, it always amazes me how they remember. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, how many pages do you say? 11. 11. That's a lot of, that's a lot of script. Yeah, I mean, it's 18 to 20 minutes of yeah. material. Yeah. It's and like I, a, every one of them is like a, a, a short one act. Yeah. One, one person, one act play. It is. Um, and there's so and much material. And not every actor can do that. I mean, if you think about a normal play, um, you know, there's cues. There's, you're interacting with other people. and. And you, you know the, you can take your cue if you lose your place from, you know, from your fellow actors. Um, that's not the case with this. It's just you in the cemetery, you know, doing you in the audience. So I tell the actors, this is your living room. That's how comfortable you have to be. <laughs> mm -hmm. So everything is just very easy, you know. Karen Kalana, who played um, Lucy uh, Peabody, Lucy Peabody, uh, her, her, her. She um, was very good. She was great. I mean, a lot of people like her, but her, her fear was she goes back in memory, right? Memory to the Rook House, the yeah, Emma's yeah, Rook House, yeah, yeah. coming out of memory. So she was. That was her. Uh, that was her. Uh, uh, she was very, very right. scared sure about which queen she was talking about because yeah. she interacts with Queen Lili Uakalani as well. Coming Queen out of memory, Emma, going and, back you know, memory. going back to Queen Emma, yeah. memories with Queen Emma. Um, and that's one of the things I actually had to work with Zach on as I was reading the first couple drafts of the script. So we, it's like we need to make sure absolutely clear which queen we're talking about when. <laughs> right, right, right. Because right. um, that's one of the things that I, I ended up having getting confused about when I was, as we were going through the you know the review process. Well, it's, it's dense material. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, they, and they have to be able to deliver it in a way that you get it. You know, yeah. and, and, and the great thing away. about the great thing about well, I can speak for this five uh, actors they just 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 wanted to just just go for it you know mm -hmm. they, i mean they, uh, whereas i mean i some of the, the, the people who i offered the two roles for they're such great actors but they got scared but and, and you know what luckily we got two other people to take their parts i think they would they, they were better 
Yeah. And well, how they just relish it, you know? Yeah, I mean, uh, yes, you, you, you have a benefit of having somebody next to you to bounce it off and, right. and give you cues and all that. But I suppose the experience of the actor yeah. um, is different, more internal, more introspective when yeah. you're a one-man band. Yeah. And you've got right. to live that role and integrate all this information into yeah. your mind right now. And, I, and then uh, what also happens, too, with the actor is that they have so much respect for the person they're portraying, mm. so that they actually, I mean, like Karen Colonna, she actually brings flowers. The, the, the what was the flower? That oh, the she, geraniums. The geraniums. She brought geraniums to Lucy Peabody's grave. Um, um, uh, uh, the uh, Cartwright, he bought the baseball. To put it, I mean, they honor, they become your friends. Yeah, I mean, I've right. acted in several. William Canoe, who's buried over at Kauai Hall Church. I always, whenever I do a show and I get fresh lay and whatnot, I always make sure that I bring, <laughs> I give it to yeah, and it's a, It seems to be a very, um, you know, almost spiritual experience for the actors as well. They feel a real yeah, connection to, see this, that. to this person. Yeah. Um, you know, these, these portrayals, because these were real people, you know, once upon a time. This and is, there's so much respect for them. For, yeah, know, absolutely. And to tell, be able to tell yeah. their story. Um, um, and they feel a great uh, responsibility to, to do that and to do it well, um, which I think uh, adds to the experience, not just the actor, but also the audience. And, and the fact that the, uh, as in most, most cases anyway, the, the decedent is right there, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. a few feet away, and it, it lends a special aura to the whole experience. Right. And then sometimes we have descendants Come to the show. Yes. Mm -hmm. Remember the, um, the, that lady who's uh, who was All there. Around. She was a sponsor. Yeah, right. And, yeah. yeah. She, she asked you questions, and wow, that yeah. was really a trip. Yeah, we've had. Yeah, her grandparents uh, ran ran Palama Settlement at the time Mabel Smythe was there, and they sponsored I, Mabel. And they sponsored. They paid for Mabel's education in Boston. <sighs> That and was yeah. yeah, and then we had uh, Yalkea descendants come to the come oh, to yeah. the program as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Nakuina uh, uh, that two years before right. Emma Nakuina her uh, yeah. whole, what a trip. Her her great grandniece found out that we were doing her, and so she just came to just see her to see if we were gonna what we were doing. And she was so taken by it, she hugged the actress afterwards, and then the next week she bought the whole family. Oh, yeah, there was like 14 I of them. I can see that happening. Yeah. Because I tell all my friends they got to go down and see it. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and when we get back, I'm going to ask you, when we get back from this break, we have a break. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Every June. Every June. Uh, yeah. yeah, okay, well, uh, how about June and January? I'm going to ask you that. <laughs> we'll be right back from this short break. Hey, aloha, Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii, where community matters. This is the place to come to think about all things energy. We talk about energy for the grid, energy for vehicles, energy in transportation, energy in maritime, energy in aviation. We have all kinds of things on our show, but we always focus on hydrogen here in Hawaii because it's my favorite thing. That's what I like to do. But we talk about things that make a difference here in Hawaii, things that should be a big changer for Hawaii, uh, and we hope that you'll join us every Friday at noon on Stand Energy Man and take a look with us at new technologies and new thoughts on how we can get clean and green in Hawaii. Aloha. Hello everyone, I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. We are having such a good time today. This is my, my eye-opener show today. <laughs> good, good. Mike Smola and Will Howe uh, yeah. from um, the uh, Hawaiian Mission Houses. Yes. Otherwise known sometimes as the Mission House Museum. Sometimes formerly known. Formerly known. There right? you go. And we're talking about this fabulous show called Cemetery Poo Poo Theater. And if you haven't gone to see it this season, you got to go next season, next June. Put a note in your calendar. What day in June can you do? Uh, we don't have a, usually it's, uh, we're going to continue to do three weekends in June. This year was the first time we've done three weekends. We usually only do two. Uh, but we've sold out the four nights of shows the last two yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we added the third weekend this year, which did very well. Um, so we're excited to continue with three weekends. If I want to learn about it, where do I go? Uh, you go to www.missionhouses.org. Okay. Um, and that's our that's the Mission Houses website, and they'll have all of our stuff about our events. It is so precious in the sense that, you know, you... you 
it is an experience you never forget. You want to you want to have more of it. You want to come back as often as you can. Everybody feels that way. Peter uh, Rossek, uh, you know mm -hmm. him. He was here yesterday. We talked about this oh, show. Right. Awesome. Well, uh, the, you know, there's Dina, his wife. Yeah. So there's something you can do oh, about Dina that. Drink. Yeah, over at Diamond Head Theater. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I said, Dina, what did you think of the acting at, at the Poo Poo Theater? What did she say? She said, you know how I feel about it. I wouldn't have been there unless the acting was great. <laughs> awesome. She runs Diamond Head Theater. Yeah, yeah I know. I, I, yeah. She's, she's a regular. Yeah, yeah. she's yeah. been coming for several years. Good to see her there, too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, awesome, yeah. awesome. But one of the things that we can do, actually, um, you don't have to wait for June every year. Ah. Uh -huh. uh, yes, you can actually hire these uh, working uh, oh, yeah, mission houses. Yeah. Yep, you can hire the actors to come to your civic group, your garden club meeting, uh, you know, your rotary club meeting, whatever, um, and they can come to you and, and perform their perform their monologues for you we, in costume. Yeah, we've had them go out and now they're going into schools. Now we're well. even taking the program into schools. Oh, that's fabulous. Yeah, oh. uh, we've next, had five, had five performances in schools. Next uh, week we're off to Maui, right? Uh, yeah, and next week we're off to Maui for the first time. We're, we're taking we're, this program. All uh, five. No, uh, no there's, there's three. Uh, we're doing uh, Samuel Kamakau, uh, Annie Alexander, and and Reverend William Richards. Uh, so on Friday night, uh, July 20th, we'll be at the Baldwin House in Lahaina. And July perfect. 21st, we'll be at Makawao Cemetery. Where she's uh, buried. Uh, where Annie Alexander oh, that's is so buried. Perfect. So this is the first time the actress gets to actually perform at Annie's grave. She's living which, uh, history. So she's, she's, living she's, history. It is, and she's July. so stoked about it. So too. important. You realize the service you're doing at by, your by service. bringing this alive. That's yeah. what artists do, at your service. Right. right. There you go. No, and that's what it is. It's about presenting <laughs> history to the public in a way that they, they, they um, they like and that they, they that makes it accessible so it's not uh, only to education, people who are non-scholars. It's, you know? it's, uh, it's not only education, it's, it's, it's culture in the deepest sense mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's for people who are Native Hawaiian too who need, who need to study this. Oh, so many it's, for, it's, for, it's for yeah. everyone. Yeah. It's yeah. for everyone and not everyone knows everything about history. Yeah. Yeah. There's a chance to, to learn just a little slice about it. You know, a little slice of that history in a, in a little bit different and deeper yeah, manner I mean, than they might otherwise. Interest and they're on their own, they go and look for more stuff. Absolutely. You know? As you, you yeah. Well, of course. <laughs> every, every year we do this, I went, I go, Mike, I never knew this. <laughs> Just never. I mean, every year I learn something different. Mm -hmm. And so do the actors. They went like, oh, I never knew. So right. let's talk about my experience two weeks ago. <laughs> When I, when I learned about how the royalty worked in the 19th century, oh boy. Mm -hmm. we all see it at such great distance. We, mm -hmm. we never get inside the court and right. see the dynamics of the people there and, and how, you know, the well, people... people like to romanticize, yeah? Of course. And that's not good. Right. Um, but, yeah, I mean, there's also, um, you know, not just the, the royalty themselves, but also the uh, personal relationships. You know, the thing to remember is that the royalty all grew up together. They, you know, they, uh, they went to school, school together, together yeah. the chief children's school. Yeah. Um, you know, they grew up, you know, they lived together and so um, it makes uh, you know for just like uh, any other type of family you know there's a there's a certain amount of dynamics that go Remember on. Remember that old BBC show Upstairs Downstairs? Sure. Hawaii should do a, a, a thing about that. The royalty, the people, and then the people that worked who know all the secrets <laughs> and whatnot. Well, that's, that's what it was show. like. That's, show. Show. Yeah. 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 that's what it was like for sure. Yeah. And, and this kind of dynamic, you, know, you can go through your whole life, you can go to school and study Hawaiian history, never really find out about this. Mm -hmm. Because this yeah. is the, the, you know, they're interpreting it. It's not just that you're writing the script. And what Mike it's does all too this is interpretation. Some of the, the lines that, that are being spoken are their actual words. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from, Mike listed from, right. their, from their writing. When you research, you, you get right. the actual and, words. And, yeah. yeah, and Zach's gotten really good at, at, at pulling things out of <coughs> journals and letters and, and things I find in the research. And um, using, you know, he really does try to use their own words as much as possible. Why should we... Um, you know, make up thing. You know, make up words to tell a story, a particular story, when we have their own words. Right. Yeah. And that's, I think that's lends uh, even more authenticity to these. Where can I find the scripts? Can I find the scripts? Uh, you can call me, <laughs> um, and we'll talk. Mike Smoller. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. They're they're all, they're they're all in the file at the mission. We have yeah. like what over forty characters. We have over there. forty portrayals that we've developed yeah. over. So the we last can you can hire years. a la carte. You know, yeah. one here, or even there. a private show for for your company or your group at up we, at the we, had, we've had Bank of Hawaii. Bank of Hawaii uh, did a private show. show just if I was Zuckerberg, 
Oh, okay. in my in my right. fancy place in Kauai. I bring them all over. Do the whole thing. <laughs> sure, there you go. There you go. <laughs> well, well, you know, as long as uh, as long as that the you know the the budget is you know right. Of course, of course. Out, that, you know. And we are looking at uh, trying to find other ways of getting these portrayals out to the public at different times and in different places. So yeah. we're, we're we're starting to explore some other partnerships. Like not as just well. other islands, but to the mainland as well. Mm -hmm. Are you going to yeah. do these characters again? Do you think there's a chance of that, or will you always go forward? and find new ones? Um, well, I think that's one of the draws to the program is that they are different every year. Um, yeah. uh, there, there might be a chance for a reprisal of some of these reprisal, earlier shows. Reprisal, I love yeah. that. Uh, yeah. yeah, it might be, there might be a chance in the future to reprise uh, some, of the, some of the previous shows. I mean, in there's, case you there's interest um, from diff all different uh, spectrum. You're like putting it in a theater. Yes. I would love to do it, to, to light it. You're get right. the sound, like a real sound stage. director and stuff like that. Yeah, and then having like dancers as ghosts coming in and out. Yeah, I mean, you, you, just you wouldn't have it. the gravestones, but there are other things you could put oh, yeah. into a theater oh, absolutely. that would brighten it up. Yeah. That would make yeah. it interesting. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about costumes for a minute. Oh. I mean, some of the costumes. I'm thinking, for example, Mabel Smythe, my favorite one. Mm -hmm. She had this fabulous nurse's costume, mm -hmm. and it was, well, it, you know, just look at her, and you were transported back to that right. time. Sam and right. Cartwright, his Cartwright, his, very his, that red, yeah. Pig made it from scratch. With the buttons. Right. The same thing with the, uh, the fire with Mabel's buttons. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> right. So yeah, um, so the Mabel Smythe's outfit is, um, so her script is set in 1915. And so I found a um, a picture of a World War I nurse's uniform. Perfect. And that's what Peggy based the costume on. Yeah. Um, and Cartwright's shirt. Uh, he went to the museum. I went to the fire department museum in Kaka'ako <laughs> at the Kaka'ako station. And they have one um, from the period when Cartwright was fire chief. And I said, so I, I took a nice picture of it and sent it to, to Peggy Crock, the costumer. And she, 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 she went it perfect. And then uh, the, but, uh, the one in the fire department doesn't have the bib uh, that buttons onto the front of the which shirt. Which she had. Uh, which she had. Had, which she added, added, yeah. I mean, um, designers, that's what would have been yeah. there. And so for designers, they really get off on stuff like that. You know, right. they just love it. And one of the yeah. um, other neat things about the costume is that uh, um, depending upon the time period, we actually have photos of these people. And so oh, these real, these actual uh, people. Yeah, yeah. Of oh, these yeah. actual yeah. people. So, so we actually have really photos. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so we, we, she has an interesting chance to, to recreate some of these outfits and do these sort of period pieces based on real documented evidence of what they wore. And you know, she's such a talented designer. I mean, she, she is. She got her uh, schooling in New York City. And the funny thing is, she lived in New York at a different time than I lived in New York. <laughs> we lived in the same building. <laughs> oh, wow. We know no, the same kidding. super and everybody. Wow, the yeah. same super. Now that, that's New Yorkese for superintendent <laughs> right, right, right. of the building. The doorman and everything, yeah. So it shows you a depth of involvement in the New York scene. You 25 know. years. <laughs> oh, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, and this yeah. is world class stuff. This is world class. When you guys oh, are doing you, world Jay. class, it's, it's really, uh, it, not only is it valuable you know, as, as entertainment and culture, but it is high quality quality stuff and it's con contribution to uh, I hope I, I like to think an emerging excellence we have in performing arts Do you agree absolutely yeah. absolutely I, I don't see doing anything but getting better yeah. yeah. Well, it, you know, every year, you know, everybody goes like, "Oh, this is the best one yet," and so next year, oh, this is the best one yet. You know. Yeah. And hopefully, you can keep that string going. Yeah. Well, all I can tell you is when Mabel Smythe, uh, I don't know, what's the name of the character, the person, uh, Sienna Axon. Yeah. She, she was. She was. I happened to be in the first row. I mean, it's all mm -hmm. changeable. You can go mm -hmm. in the first row one time, in the second row the other time. Right. Walk back around. row. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's good from any row, but I was in the first row and I was this far away mm. from her. And and I was smitten. I, I was there. Right. I was there in her time and place. I, I, I understood where she was coming from. I understood her life. She emoted to me yeah. the whole enchilada. And I was transported by this yeah. this actor, yeah. this character, this experience. Mm -hmm. And wow! And, and the others were great too. But this yeah. is she she smote me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're so easy to. I mean, especially um, Sienna. I've worked with her before in the Tempest when we did the Tempest. She played Ariel uh, to Moses Good's um, Prospero, and she was just easy to just so easy to direct. And she just just takes in whatever you give. And it's so funny. Is that I said. Your name is, last name is Axon. Do you know um, Evie? Evie Axon? She goes, yeah, that's my aunt. Uh, well, her aunt is married to my cousin. <laughs> so no nepotism here. <laughs> right. She has to be it's better, okay. you know. Right. But, uh, you know, no, she's, and then she had just 
we just lucked out again because she had just come back from Sarah Lawrence. She just graduated. And I said, are you interested in auditioning for this? And she came and we, Mike goes, you got the role. She, she, she yeah, literally, she was, she was she was studying acting, right? Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. As soon as she was done, I'm, we kind of looked at each other and went, OK, the job's yours. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, that's she, she that's how good she it. was. Yeah. The, other, the other one that I remember, especially, and I'll tell you why, um, was the, uh, the, the uh, fire chief. Um, oh, Alexander Cartwright. Cartwright, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> Mr. Baseball. Yeah. No, no. I'm sorry. Not the fire chief. The the, the sheriff. Right. The Marshall. Sheriff. Marshall. Uh, William the, Cooper Park. William Cooper Park. Yeah. Chris. Because because he came. The character came from New Hampshire, as I remember. Yes. His accent. And mm -hmm. he he doesn't have a New Hampshire accent. No. no. So he learned to speak New Hampshire, and he did speak New Hampshire. So we, we had the no first less. the first table read. We got all the actors together for the first time. And we went in a row like this, and when it came to his turn, he started, and we all were just like, <laughs> what's going on here? Yeah. Right. Awesome. And yeah, no, he, he, does, he is not from New Hampshire, yeah. uh, nor does he have the accent naturally. So yeah, he had to, he had to work on it. He had to work on that New Hampshire accent. Uh, we had a, a previous show when we did Footprints on the Land. Um, Kevin Keaveney portrayed Dr. Joseph Rock, who is Austrian. And to give you an idea of the, the the, the way these actors work sometimes. Um, Kevin actually rewrote out the entire script phonetically in an Austrian accent. Right, really? so you can make sure that he had the accent right the you whole really script. Have to, you have usually yeah. your and, coaches. And, and, yeah. You help them with that, right? Yeah, but I mean, and they all work differently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you cannot treat them. It's like you have children. You cannot treat them all the same. They're all different, you know. Yeah. And so you have to do. You know, also got to be like a psychiatrist. <laughs> right. You guys are the consummate professionals in this you know? area. I, but you know, you, it's so it, nice. The, the great thing about all the people that we we have acting, they're all basically really nice people. Yeah. yeah. So it's just so easy to direct. And they make a great effort. I mean, to learn another dialect. Uh, I mean, yeah. for example, I never, I never really fixed on the notion that in the 19th century, with all these people coming to Hawaii's shores, mm -hmm. they talked in different dialects. Sure. Oh yeah. It was not different just accents, all American dialects. English. It was a bunch of things. Yeah. Oh yeah. And and so when you hear, then you realize that it, it wasn't just Park Sheriff Park. Mm -hmm. it, <clears throat> there's a lot of people in town who spoke that way. Right. Right. And and that Absolutely. sort of that puts you there, puts you in the middle. Right. And yeah. the other thing to remember is like early in the 19th century, like, you know, around the time the missionaries are coming, the American English is still very British. Yes. Um, they still write honor with a U in it, you know, yes. for example. You know, yes. So it's still, you know, American English is just becoming a thing. Yeah. I mean, know? you know, even even today, I mean, if you go to another island, their, their pigeon is different from our pigeon. If you go from Honolulu to Waianae, the pigeon is different. Mm -hmm. yeah. And your work is sensitive to that very idea. Yeah. So when you go, you get the most accurate representation of what it might have been like with these characters in this time. Yeah, I mean, the best we can find in the research. It really is an incredible, incredible effort. Yeah. So let me, let me uh, ask you guys, uh, how long is this going to last? I mean, how old are you, for example, and how much of the rest of your life are you going to put into it? <laughs> and can I, can I buy tickets for like 10 years in advance? What do you think? <laughs> I don't know. Well, it, I, the program is not going away anytime soon. Okay. No. All right. All right. Uh, we're going to continue to do the program. It's it's actually one of our most successful at the Mission Houses. And, and you know, uh, people should go to the website because the Mission Houses has a, a, a whole season of activities. Oh yeah, we have we do a lot of other programs besides cemetery theater. Uh, we have music series and, and concert series. Uh, I've seen series. some in Shakespeare. Yeah, well. yeah, yeah, yeah. So in August, have one coming up now. Uh, yeah, yeah, August seventeenth, eighteenth. We've partnered up with Hawaii Shakespeare Festival actually this year to do a one weekend reprisal of uh, the current show, which is All's Well That Ends Well, uh, directed by Tony Pasculi, who's uh, not only director of the show, but director of the Shakespeare yeah, Festival. He's uh, one of the founders, and uh, it's a whole all-female cast. Ah, yeah, yeah. That's something cute. different. Something that's different. Something, something I, different. Yeah, that was uh, their Sunday when they were rehearsing. Yeah, so uh, yeah, it should be fun. I mean, I know, I think half of the cast, and so good people. So absolutely, it's going to be great. Yeah, great absolutely. In August fourth, we have the uh, the next installment of our music series. Uh, we're going to have the entire Asing Ohana come uh, with full production musicians, from guest musicians from Maui, <laughs> focusing on songs of Maui, uh, Meli O Maui, and the full production musicians, guest musicians, hula. I mean, 
mean, it's going to be a whole big a, show. Hawaii Mission House has an outdoor stage, yeah, so it's mm -hmm. beautiful. You know, you have the the flora and whatnot, the white chairs, like on the lawn. Yeah, it's beautiful. Like oh, yeah. under the stars. Been there, been yeah. there. So missionhouses.org. Yep. Yeah. And uh, we can come and see it. And I only have one more question for you guys because we're right. kind of out of time. And sure. you've been so excited and passionate about your work, as we all should be. We should oh. all be excited and passionate about your work. I just, but my question is, how do you really feel? <laughs> uh, after tired, <laughs> but after, after, after three like, weekends, so yeah, you're exhausted. <laughs> but doing it is like just like you, you just get all pumped up, you know. Yeah, right. Yeah, you I know. see that here. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, it is such a. a yeah. 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 I mean, it is, but to see the audience, you know, at the Q and A afterwards after the show. Oh, yeah. they, you know you did something yeah. really yeah. nice. Yeah. Absolutely. Mike Smola, well, thank you, Jay. Thank you, yeah. Will Howe. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming down. Your yeah, thank, thanks to Cora that she brought you along and you discovered this. Yeah, thanks yeah. to Cora Yamamoto, yeah. My classmate. <laughs>